When it comes to Venice, you might think you know it all already. Everyone's heard of the iconic gondolas, the rambunctious carnival, and the magnificent bridges that cross the canals. The city of Venice is actually made up of a 118 of different islands connected by 400 bridges, each with different characters and landmarks. The Campanile, the distinctive pointed bell tower of St. Mark's Basilica, is the tallest building in Venice. While this means that it offers stunning views over the city and the Piazza San Marco, it also means that it attracts lightning in stormy weather. Most people know that Venice is having problems, and a lot of them revolve around the water. A city constructed on the water is inevitably precarious, and recent reports have indicated that Venice is sinking up to 2 mm per year. If you're remotely superstitious, don't walk between the two columns holding the city's patron saints in Piazza San Marco. It used to be the place people were executed, so it's considered unlucky. St. Mark's Cathedral is an awe-inspiring showcase of Italo-Byzantine architecture. This basilica story began with a purpose, to honor St. Mark with a majestic home for his relics. The church has a unique and eclectic mix of styles and materials. Venice imported the art and architectural style from the Byzantine world. Just as Venice is like no other city in the Europe, St. Mark's is like no other church in Europe. Inside, you'll step into a dazzling mosaic wonderland, spanning a whopping 90,000 square feet. In the year 828, the very first version of St. Mark's Basilica was erected. Its primary purpose was to serve as a sacred abode for the relics of St. Mark the Evangelist. In a daring feat, in 828, two Venetian merchants secretly stole the saint's remains from Alexandria. They embarked on a journey to Venice, cleverly disguising the precious cargo under a layer of pork. To justify this audacious act, a legend gradually took shape. It recounted that St. Mark's relics were retrieved amidst a fierce lagoon storm. This fabricated tale legitimized Venice as the fitting final resting place for the saint. As time marched on, the basilica underwent a series of renovations and expansions. Each contributed to its breathtaking grandeur. This iconic church in Venice held immense significance not only in spiritual matters, but also in political realms. Worshippers recognized that their allegiance was to the doge, not the pope, a testament to the intertwining of faith and governance. The basilica was even known as the doge's chapel. The place is no stranger to history's twists, fires, earthquakes, floods, and preservation fights. It's not hard to fall in love with Venice. It's one of the most spectacular cities on the planet. A place filled with colorful architecture, pretty waterways, and a glittering lagoon. 
Connected by 400 bridges and 170 waterways, these islands, nestled in a calm coastal lagoon, give Venice its unique charm. As you walk around, it's easy to forget they are separate islands, as it feels like one city's landmass. Although it's one of Italy's most famous and interesting cities, Venice was an independent city-state for over 1,100 years. It was an influential and important maritime trading republic from 697 to 1797, when Napoleon conquered the city. It was later incorporated into the Kingdom of Italy in 1866. The Rialto Bridge is the oldest of the four bridges that cross Venice's Grand Canal, the city's main waterway, connecting the districts of San Polo and San Marco. The iconic bridge is also the most famous, thanks to its long history, dating back to the 12th century. The first Rialto Bridge was built in 1181 and was a simple wooden structure later replaced by a more substantial wooden bridge. As the wooden bridge had collapsed in two occasions and been partially burnt down in 1310, it was rebuilt in stone by the architect Antonio de Ponte who has won competition with Michelangelo. As the Rialto Bridge was the only place to cross the Grand Canal on foot, it was vital that the bridge could stand up to heavy use and also allow boats to pass underneath. The Rialto functions as a continuous staircase with a single arch over the Grand Canal. The bridge is flanked by covered walkways, known as loggias. These spaces once bustled with commercial merchants selling a variety of goods today, they are a marketplace for tourists. Did you know the city's central thoroughfare, the Grand Canal, stretches for two and a half miles and is 16 feet deep? With no cars in Venice, 60% of the total city traffic passes along the Grand Canal, making it one of the most important waterways in Italy. Despite it being busy, it doesn't have the intensity of driving down a busy motorway. Another interesting fact about Venice is that it's home to one of the narrowest streets in the world. Calle Varisco is just 53 centimeters wide and is named after the Varisco family, a group of silk workers who were notable in the city in the 15th century. During the 15th century renovations of an earlier Gothic building near Campo Manon, a unique spiraling staircase was added to the outside, creating one of the city's most unusual places to visit. The staircase spirals upward, encased by a balustrade and a series of graceful arches that give it an almost delicate air. The building became known as the Contarini del Bovolo Palace, referring to the Venetian word for snail.
Perhaps the most famous symbol of Venice are the city's beautifully decorated, historic gondolas. However, did you know becoming a gondolier isn't easy? Only three or four new gondolier licenses are granted each year. The art of manning a gondola is a historic Venetian tradition, previously passed down from father to son, and now regulated by a strict training protocol. Applicants must have amassed over 400 hours of training, undertake an apprenticeship with a master gondolier, and pass an exam. One of the most interesting facts about Venice and its gondolas is that these historic boats have to be painted completely black. This archaic law was designed to reduce unfair competition between the city's many gondoliers. Today, gondoliers decorate the inside of their gondolas with bright colors, padded seats, and pretty extras to make them stand out from the crowds. Historically, being a gondolier is a male profession. It's a trade with closely guarded secrets, passed down the generations from fathers to their sons. However, in 2010 Georgia Boscolo, herself the daughter of a gondolier, made history by becoming the first woman to pass the strict exam to become a gondolier. While it's nice to stay close to St. Mark's Square, or between there and the Rialto, it's not essential for sightseeing. Attractions are all fairly close, and you'll have to walk between them anyway. In addition to hotels near San Marco and San Zacharia stops, consider those near Salute and Academia stops in Dorsoduro. Beginning in 2025, day visitors will be charged an access tax of between 6 euros and 10 euros, depending on the season and expected tourist numbers. Visitors staying overnight in Venice already pay a lodging tax of 1 euro to 5 euros per person per night for the first five nights. If you plan to use the Vaporetto, either on the Grand Canal or to visit the islands of Murano, Burano, Lido, and Torcello, ACTV transit passes are a good value. Just as important is how close the hotel is to a Vaporetto stop on the Grand Canal. Single fares are 9 euros and 50 cents, and a full day pass is 25 euros, less than the cost of three single rides. Multiple day passes save even more, two days for 25 euros, three days for 45 euros and 65 euros for an entire week. While Venetians are quite tolerant of the masses of tourists that pour in every day, the city has some rules for visitor behavior. While these are not uniformly enforced, recent violations have resulted in steep fines. Some that you should be aware of include prohibitions on picnicking in a public place, buying from street vendors, lying down on a public bench, putting padlocks on bridges, and leaning against store fronts.
living in Venice, as an expat or local Italian, is very safe compared to other major cities in Europe and the United States. In fact, even compared to other Italian cities, such as Rome, the crime rate is very low and you'll rarely even see police patrolling the streets. There is a small issue with pickpockets in some of the major tourist areas, but as long as you take a few basic precautions you should be absolutely fine. For instance, you should always keep valuables and money in a zipped up bag and never leave your valuables on display. The arsenal, the shipyard of the Venetian Republic, was the largest and busiest in the world until the end of the 17th century. From its founding in 1104, it was continuously expanded, until in its heyday, it employed as many as 16,000 workers. Closely guarded to preserve the secret production methods that enabled it to build a fully seared ship in a single day, the arsenal was accessible by one land and one sea approach only. So tight was its security that the Republic managed to keep its art of shipbuilding secret until about 1550. At its imposing land entrance is a Renaissance-style triumphal arch guarded by lions brought from Greece as booty after the reconquest of the Peloponnese in the 17th century. Of the two lions on the left, the larger one stood guard over the port of Piraeus, while its fellow stood on the road from Athens to Eleusis. Adjacent to the shipyard is the Museum of Naval History, displaying impressive booty brought back from the numerous maritime wars of the Republic, along with fascinating collections that include votive paintings made on wood panels and thanks for rescues at sea. These charming pictures are interesting for their depiction of sea life, not so much for their artistic finesse. The small island of San Giorgio Maggiore is located south of the districts of San Marco and Castello, and east of the island of Giudecca, which is also part of Venice. The San Giorgio Maggiore Church is located on the northern tip of the island. The first church built on this site dates from the 8th century. Long ago there were vineyards, and even a mill on the island. Later a monastery was added. When an important saint was buried on the island, this prompted the doge and his wife to visit the island every year and honor the saint. 
This created an important event for the Republic of Venice, with thousands of candles floating in the Bacino di San Marco. Unfortunately, when the Republic ceased to exist, this event also disappeared. The interior of the church, a Latin plan with three naves, treasures works by masters such as Jacopo Tintoretto, Jacopo Palma I. L. Giovanni, Sebastiano Ricci, Carpaccio. Very important is the presbytery with two masterpieces by Tintoretto, canvas by Vittor Carpaccio. The impressiveness and magnificence of the building, with some renovations from 15th to 17th century also by Giovanni and Andrea Bura and Baldassare Longhina, brings to life the spatial emotion of the ancient Romantic buildings, from which the architect, Palladio, took inspiration. The church has been damaged several times, including a fire and an earthquake, but the church has always been rebuilt, including the bell tower, Campanile. Known for his fascinating account of trade along the Silk Road, Marco Polo was one of Venice's most famous and intriguing residents. Marco Polo and his family were characteristic of the Venetian merchants that moved around the Mediterranean and Islamic worlds in the Middle Ages, but he was one of only a few who wrote about his journey east. A very interesting fact about Venice is that its church towers also played a role in navigating sailors across the lagoon and along the canals. Essentially, they were lighthouses for the ships. St. Mark's Basilica had reflecting sheets attached to help reflect light to the surrounding lagoon. The Rialto market in Venice is still used by local restaurants and residents to source fresh produce and seafood. The market has a historic significance as one of the oldest markets in Venice and has been a hub for local food trade for centuries. A treat for the senses, with artistic piles of peaches and cherries, artichokes, and red chicory from Treviso. Fruit, vegetables, and fish tent are strictly seasonal. It is a lively place with many local people and tourists. The location of the Rialto Market is northwest of the Rialto Bridge in the district of San Polo. You find this fish market along the Grand Canal. This part of the Rialto Market contains writhing eels, soft-shelled crabs, giant swordfish, and crimson-fleshed fresh tuna. The local fisherman is bringing their fresh fish just after the catch in the local laguna, Nestled along the bustling waters of the Grand Canal, Foundation de Tedeschi stands as a testament to the city's vibrant past. Originally constructed in the 13th century, this architectural masterpiece served as a trading post for German merchants, known as the Fontigo de Tedeschi. 
Throughout the centuries, the building underwent various transformations, eventually becoming a majestic hub for commerce and cultural exchange. Despite enduring several fires and reconstructions, Fondaco dei Tedeschi has managed to preserve its enchanting Renaissance facade, showcasing the harmony between Gothic and Moorish influences. This captivating building not only houses a luxury department store that offers an unparalleled shopping experience, but also conceals countless architectural wonders. Ascend to the crown jewel of Fondaco dei Tedeschi, the rooftop terrace, in the upper floors. As you reach the pinnacle, an unparalleled vista of Venice unfolds before your eyes. Gaze upon the iconic Grand Canal, with its gondolas gliding through the shimmering waters. Best of all, entrance to the rooftop is free for all. However, due to its popularity, we highly recommend reserving your spot online at least 21 days before your desired day of visit to ensure an unforgettable experience. The twisting turning streets and canals of Venice are a real labyrinth. The streets start to look very similar once you've delved into the depths of the city. One of the most iconic Italian celebrations, the Venice Carnival, is a riot of color, food and entertainment, and a ritual that stretches back to the Middle Ages. The tradition began as part of a celebration to prepare for the long period of fasting during Lent, and is rumored to have first taken place in 1162 to mark the victory of the Venetian Republic over Ulrich II von Treven, the Patriarch of Aquileia. The best time to visit Venice is from September to November, when tourists desert the city. Although the temperatures, which range from the upper 30s to mid-70s Fahrenheit, necessitate some layers, the lowered hotel rates and the barren canals make it worth it. Winters are cold with temperatures in the 30s and 40s Fahrenheit, while spring brings Venice's most beautiful weather. Summertime is peak season and is characterized by high hotel rates, high temperatures, and, you guessed it, plenty of crowds. Although aqua alta, high water, can occur anytime between late September and April, it's most likely to happen in November and December, so make sure to pack a pair of rain boots if you plan on traveling then.